Now in the last Excel Magic Trick 1886, we saw how to use Power Query's amazing Unpivot feature to take a cross tab table, convert it into a proper data set. That way we can use tools like Sort, Pivot Table, and even a box and whisker chart. And Excel Lambda at YouTube below in the comments, he had a formula to Unpivot. And that's what we're going to look at here. Now, of course, the formula solution is going to be more complicated to create than Power Query's Unpivot feature. We're using that most of the time. But formulas do one thing that no other tool can, and that is they instantly update when source data changes. And for a task like this, if we build the formula and then put it into a lambda, we have a reusable function. And that might be easier in some situations where you don't want to convert your data to an Excel table and bring it into Power Query. We're first going to build it piece by piece so we understand how the internal pieces are working. Then we'll mash it all together in a single formula. Then we'll remove the formula element repetition using let. And finally, we'll create a lambda reusable function. Now the first formula element we're going to use is the ifs function. And we're going to actually check the values and see if any of them are not equal to double quote, double quote. Even though that's a zero length text string, it will check for empty cells. If that comes out true, comma, then we want a one. That's all we're putting, close parentheses, control, enter, control, enter. And we're going to use this inside of each of the extracting elements. Extract the values into a column, row headers into a column, and column headers into a single column in a table. And we're going to use it so when there's an empty cell, that NA is the trigger to remove the record that would have shown Atlanta, AT&T, and whatever that value is. Control Z. Now we're going to try and get Atlanta listed four times, Boston listed four times, and so on. So we're going to try and get all the city elements into a single column. Well, guess what? We're going to multiply that times sequence and look at however many rows there are in the value area. Close, close. And you can see that this just gives us 1 to 20, however many rows were in the original data set. Control Enter. And look at that, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2. And those four ones represent Atlanta in the first row, which needs to be repeated four times. 2, 2, 2, 2, that represents Boston. And then check this out. If I delete, that NA is going to be the trigger to skip Atlanta. And how could NA be the trigger? Because there's this amazing function called to call That just takes our array and throws it into a single column. Now, by default, it'll take the first row, 11111, the second row, 22222, which is exactly what we want. Now, before we put the next argument, let's just see what this gives us. Control-Enter. Wow, there's the ones, there's the twos. Now we can repeat each city four times. And watch this. Delete. As is, that would wreck everything. Control Z. But if we use the second argument, comma, inside of two calls, number two, ignore errors. And what that means is if one of the values in the first row is NA, it'll just skip it and show three. Control Enter. Delete. And that is magic. We have three ones to repeat Atlanta three times. But there's four twos. And it doesn't matter where we do this. It adjusts perfectly. Control Z, Control Z. Now, before we use these values to look up city, I want to show you the values that we're going to generate for the column headers. We're going to use the same formula element. This is our ones or NA. And this, because we put columns counting 1 to 4 in the second argument, you can see there's the result, 1, 2, 3, 4. So when I Control Enter, now we get 1, 2, 3, 4, which is exactly what we need to extract, 1, 2, 3, 4 items. And then in the next row, we need to extract the same 1, 2, 3, 4. And of course, we put that in to call. And don't forget 2 for ignore errors, Control Enter. And now if I delete this, and look at how magic this is, 111, 
That gets Atlanta three times, and then it skips the number one. It gets two, three, four, Sprint, T-Mobile, and Verizon. Control Z. We'll do the values in just a second, but those aren't as hard because we can just use two call, and it automatically gets row by row. We come to city, F2. We're going to use this array of numbers inside of choose rows. So I'm going to choose these rows, comma. There's the row numbers. Now, when XO Lambda showed me this, I said, well, why can't we use index? And the reason is simple. Choose rows if we have multiple conditions out here in the row. That will work, whereas index would require both a row and a column number. Control Enter. Delete these two. Two Atlantis only. And look at that, 3, 4 to grab those two items. Control Z. Now to get the column headers into a single column, we use the same trick. But wait a second. These are across the columns. So I'm going to use transpose. This will switch the orientation of the column headers, regardless if we have one row or multiple rows, from horizontal to vertical, giving us the rows. So we can use row numbers to look them up. Close parentheses, comma. Close at the end, Control Enter. And here's the magic when I delete those. The records in the resulting table are perfect because it ignored one, two different records that didn't have data. Control Z. Now for the values, we're going to use the same formula element, but use the if function. And right in logical test, this element will deliver one true or the NA, which means skip that record. So we come to the end, comma. And what do we want if it's true? We want all the values. Close, Control, Enter, Delete. And that's perfect, because now we can two call and ignore errors. There's two call, ignore errors, and bam. If I remove these two elements, we only have the correct two resulting records. Now that's piece by piece. Now we just need to mash it together, Control Z. And watch this. This is a great trick. I'm going to copy this. Control CC. That copies and opens up the clipboard. If that doesn't work for you, you've got to switch your default settings for clipboard. The bottom of the clipboard, you can choose options and choose to use Control CC. Now I'm going to copy. Now I only have to do one C. Copy. Now I'm going to move these over to the side as a trail. And because they're spilled arrays, I only have to move the top ones. Equals H stack, array one, I click, comma, array two, click, comma, array three, click. Close parentheses, and that is a massive formula, but it does the trick all in one cell. When I delete, the resulting table is updating perfectly. Control Z. Now, the next step is to remove a lot of the repetition using the let function. Now, I'm going to move this off to the side just to leave a trail. Now, let allows us to define variables. So I said R for the row, C for column. And now we'll give it name 3, V, comma, name for value 3, values, comma, and Alt, Enter. Now, because each formula element that takes the row, column, and values and unpivots it into a column uses the same ifs formula element, I'm going to define it as i, which means include, comma, ifs, v for values, not double quote, double quote, comma, one, close parentheses. Now, we have used let here to define r to represent that range, c, that range, V, there's the range, and I is going to represent that formula element. And we use let anytime we have repeating formula elements. We have to use all these elements in multiple places. That way, let, it calculates it one time, stores it in memory. For example, this right here, that big array of 1s and NAs, it calculates it one time, stores it in memory, and every time it has to access that formula element, it's already calculated. And not only does it help the formula to calculate more quickly, but oftentimes it's much easier to read a formula when you lay it out this way. Now, very importantly, comma, Alt, Enter. When you're building a formula like this, I like to test right inside the let 
to see if the formula elements I'm creating are working. So we'll test and see if I is working. Sure enough, it is. F2. And I'm going to use RR to represent the new column we're creating for row. And check this out. I'm just going to paste this. Click. So double click. That should be R. So I type in R. We have a variable for ifs, I. And in rows, we'll put V. Come to the end, comma, Alt, Enter, RR. Close, Control, Enter. Let's test it. Delete. Wow, that is magic. Control Z, F2, CC for the second new column. Add the formula element. Double click. That should be C, the variable C. This will be the variable I. And inside of columns, we'll put V. At the end, comma, Alt, Enter, CC, close, Control, Enter. I'm checking it. Delete. That is magic, Control, Z, F2, backspace, V, V for the next name, comma. Add our formula element. That's going to be I. So now we have I, that's the ifs in logical test. It'll deliver a 1. In that case, we want values. Otherwise, that NA will get rid of the record. So right here, double click, we want V. At the end, comma, Alt, Enter, VV, close, Control, Enter. Delete some values to check. Man, each time it is working, Control Z. Backspace, backspace. And now we can create for calculation the final formula output. This will be horizontal stack. We can horizontally stack the three parts of the table. RR, comma, CC, comma, VV. Close, close, Control, Enter. And bam, there's our second version of the unpivot formula without repetition. If we delete to test, it is working like a charm. Control Z. Now I move some stuff off to the side to leave a trail. But now we want to convert this to a reusable function. Well, after the equal sign, lambda. Open parentheses, Alt, Enter, Alt, Enter. Now what lambda does is lambda allows us to define a reusable function. Down on the screen tip, we see the argument parameter. That's asking us to name the function arguments that will show up in the screen tip when we invoke the function. Well, how many inputs are there? One, two, three, row, column, value. So we're going to have to put three parameters. Those are the function argument names. And then we type a comma. And calculation is the let. That's what the new function will deliver. All right, so it makes sense to say something like row criteria for the first argument. That's this area of whatever cross tab we're trying to unpivot, comma, column criteria, and values, comma. Three parameters. Now we need to put let as the calculation. As it stands right now, let has no idea what's going on up here. We have to tell let for each formula input what the function argument name is. Double click, Control C, double click, and Control V. Same for column criteria. And double click, copy values. Now, right now, if you enter this, you get nothing but errors because there are no formula inputs. But if we come to the end, close parentheses, that whole thing is what we copy and paste up into define names. We name the function smartly so we can just type equal sign, and it will show up in the drop down list. But to test it, since this is an actual function, we open parentheses. And just as we do for any function, we have to highlight the arguments. Hey, there's row criteria, comma, column criteria, comma, values. And then we close parentheses. This whole thing is allowing us to test to see if it works in the worksheet. Later, we'll paste this up into define names. And all of this will be hidden. Just the function with the three arguments will be showing. Control, Enter. We can test. And our third version is still working, Control-Z. Let's go test this on a different 
more complicated cross tab, control C, escape. Over on 1887.2, we have two conditions in the row, two conditions in the column. Edit mode, control V. And I'm going to try and double click the row area and highlight both row conditions. Double click column, both column conditions. Double click values. Here we go. I got my fingers crossed, Control Enter. Wow, that is an amazing function. And we can test it, delete. And sure enough, it's getting the correct records, skipping one, two, three, four, five, six records. Control Z. Now the final step is to copy this and put it into define names. I don't need the test part, but I'm going to leave it there as a trail. Control C, Escape. To open up Name Manager and create our new function, Control F3. New. We can name this function Unpivot. Down in the formula bar, delete everything, Control V. We're definitely writing a description because this will show up when we invoke the function. And now let's click OK. There it is. Close. Down below equals unpivot. And there it is. There's the description. Row criteria, comma, column, comma, the values, control, enter. Does it work if I test it? That is amazing. Control Z. All right, here's the bonus. Add one, two, three arguments in the new Lambda function so we can enter the field names as text. Down here, instead of just H stack, we do V stack and then horizontal stack to join the field names. And then V stack will vertically stack the field names and the table. You can see down here, I tested it by entering the three new arguments. Control Enter, working like a charm. Now in Define Names, I give it the name. There's the formula. And I added some helpful description. That's how it shows up when I invoke the function. And when I use the function, one, two, three new field names, Control Enter. Field names and a proper data set all from a cross tab table. All right, thanks to Excel Lambda for this awesome formula. And we'll see you next video.